Good evening. My name is Jennifer Schrammick. I'm the Dean of Business, Entrepreneurship, and Health Sciences at Delmar College. And it's my privilege to be able to welcome you to the pinning ceremony for the Physical Therapy Assistance Class of 2021. A pinning ceremony recognizes the hard work that students have put in and the transition that they have in moving from their education over to their chosen career. And especially this group has had no shortage of obstacles. Students that are in college these days, as so many of all of us are facing, changes in their lives due to the pandemic, due to the freeze that we had in South Texas, what a rare occurrence, and even for these students having to find new ways to learn when we had to transition to online and remote learning. So tonight is really a celebration for them of all, of, all that they've accomplished during their programs. So tonight, help us celebrate and honor these students as we move forward. Congratulations to you all and I'll turn it over to Dr. Mitchell. Thank you, Dean Schrammack. And welcome to all the friends and family members of the graduating class. My name is Sharon Donovan Mitchell. I am the new program director of the Physical Therapist Assistant Program here at Del Mar. Before we get underway, just a note of thanks to Dean Schrammack Allied Health Chair, Glenn Madden, Sean Meredith, and the Del Mar leadership for making this evening possible. Also, a heartfelt thank you to Mr. Martin Salazar for his encouragement and support for putting this evening together. Thank you. Last but not least, thank you to the graduating class. It has been my privilege to be your teacher and watch you excel under such trying times. Just a reminder for this evening, for the ceremony, Delmar officials have requested that we remain at our seats throughout the duration of the ceremony and that we continue to keep our masks on. Next in our order of ceremony, I would like to introduce our graduating student speaker. Mr. Lance Spooner, through his strong leadership, has had a highly positive influence on this class and was selected by his peers to give the address this evening. Please welcome your class president, Mr. Lance Spooner. Thank you, I really appreciate that. All right, everybody knows who I am now. My name's Lance, I'm the president of the class of 2021. Thank you all for being here. Um, it's been one heck of a ride. Just so you know, obviously we were only allowed to have two people per class mate. So if you're sitting in a seat tonight, you're special. To those watching online, thank you. We're sorry that you couldn't be here with us. So first I would like to start off with giving a huge shout out to my wife. In Proverbs 18.22 it says, he who finds a wife has find a good thing and has obtained favor with the Lord and I have attained great, great favor. I would not have been able to get through this without you, so thank you. Second, I would like to thank our wonderful professors, Dr. Mitchell and Luke. Without them, we would have been very, very lost. Cannot thank our professors without also thanking Jan. Jan was our program director for the first year, and unfortunately, due to family issues, had to step away to take care of her family. I would like to give a big round of applause to Jan because she was awesome. All right, next, I would like to thank all the adjunct instructors that have been a huge part of this program. Without you guys, we would have also been lost. So if you're an adjunct instructor, please stand so we can also applaud you. All right, so this program specifically went through a lot of rather difficult challenges and hardships. One, our favorite PT goddess Jan left us halfway through. We understand, it's okay, we forgive you. Obviously we went through COVID as well. This is a very hands-on program, so that put a huge wrench in things, made learning rather difficult, but through our awesome professors, Luke specifically, and Martin, and also Dr. Fisher, they made it an 
enjoyable learning env uh, environment, even on the online setting. So, without them, we would not be standing here. So thank you guys. I know that a lot of us have great, great friendships throughout this program. We've uh, had a lot of laughs, a lot of laughs, maybe a little too much. And I'm sure that the uh, program instructors could uh, agree with that. We've made a lot of great friendships that I'm gonna cherish moving on from here. So thank you guys. You made class very, very enjoyable. Lastly, I would like to close in prayer. Please bow your heads with me. Lord God, thank you for the, our wonderful instructors. Without them, we wouldn't be standing here today. Thank you for all of our friends and family that stood beside us and got us through this very difficult program, through these very trying times. Continue to bless this class as we move on into the real world and grace us with your love and your patience as we treat our patients. Amen. Thank you. That's all I got. Wonderful, thank you. Next, I would like to present our Outstanding PTA Student of the Year Award. Not only does this award go to a student with a GPA over 3.5, but this student is selected by their peers as ex exhibiting the highest quality of character um, in consistent with a physical therapist assistant. This year's Outstanding PTA Student of the Year goes to Haley Nelson. Next up, I would like to introduce our inter inspirational speaker for the evening. Mr. Luke Markert was selected by the students to provide parting words of wisdom and encouragement for them. In gratitude, I give you Mr. Luke Markert, our Director of Clinical Education and our PTA superhero. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. PTA graduates, it is an honor and a privilege to speak with you this evening to celebrate the completion of what I am sure for many of you has been one of the most challenging periods of your lives. I want to thank the family members and friends of the graduates who are present tonight, also our uh, Delmar faculty members and Delmar College administration, uh, Dean Schrammack and Department Chair Madden, thank you for being here. Uh, everyone, your, your presence here is, is an honor for us tonight. And I certainly would be remiss if I did not uh, mention a special guest. She's already been mentioned, but I'm gonna mention her again anyway, because she really deserves, I believe, the lion's share of credit for the success uh, that the program has experienced in the past and surely will continue to experience in the future. Um, her, her years of dedication and hard work uh, really laid the foundation for the su success in this PTA program. So uh, one more time, let's just recognize our former PTA program director, Jan Spigner. Tonight, I would like to offer three simple ideas that I hope will provide you with some inspiration as you embark on your careers in physical therapy. The first is grit. I want you to be gritty. Not gritty like I've been at the beach gritty. I want you to be gritty in a sense of uh, enduring and persevering through adversity, which obviously all of you have done. Psychologist and author Angela Duckworth conducted a study to find out what really sets apart high achievers from the rest of the crowd. She studied cadets at West Point Military Academy, National Spelling Bee competitors, 
and rookie teachers. In each group that she studied, one characteristic emerged as a significant predictor of success. And as Duckworth said in a TED talk a few years ago, it wasn't social intelligence, it wasn't good looks or physical health. It wasn't even IQ. It was grit. So for those of you that may not be familiar with this term uh, used in this particular way, it just means the ability to persevere in the face of adversity. So you might ask, well, how do I become more gritty? The key to grit, as Duckworth points out, is having a growth mindset. This idea was developed at, a, at Stanford University by Carol Dweck, and it is the belief that the ability to learn is not fixed. It can change with your effort. So the next uh, point that I would like to bring up is, is the idea that you should never stop learning. Over the course of the past two years, you've all learned about the concepts of evidence-based practice, right? And I could throw out a little pop quiz and say, what are the three components, but I won't do that because you've had enough pop quizzes, right? So you all know that the, the three components are the, the best available high quality research, clinical expertise, and the patient's needs and values. Despite all of the advances we've made in healthcare research and healthcare technology, there are still many questions and many mysteries about the human body and the patient diagnoses that we encounter. As new clinicians in the first year or two, you will begin to develop a certain level of comfort, a certain level of confidence with your interventions that you use to treat your patients. But as new research is conducted, you may find that your old tried and true treatment approaches have to be updated in order to provide the highest level of care that you can to your patients. It's imperative that we, as therapists, remain open to the possibility that what we once accepted as an absolute truth may no longer be the case. And finally, I would like to ask that you consider this one point. Always remember why you entered the physical therapy profession in the first place. I've often heard it said, and you may have too, that people who enter the physical therapy prof profession have the, quote, Peace Corps gene. Whether, uh, but the reality is that healthcare and physical therapy is a business. So whether you end up working in a hospital or an outpatient clinic or for a home health company, the company has to remain profitable in order to stay in business and keep their PTs and PTAs employed. I'm sure you'll hear about productivity standards if you haven't already as your, as your time in the clinic as a student physical therapist assistant. But productivity standards are a reality. Um, sometimes healthcare workers are pressured to see a few more patients or bill a few more units or get a few more minutes with your patient during the treatment session. We gotta hit those certain levels to get that certain level of reimbursement. There may come a time during your career when you have to make decisions about the patient care that you provide. And, and to be clear, what I'm saying is you might be faced with an ethical dilemma. I faced uh, such a dilemma several years ago with an organization that I worked with, not in Corpus Christi, by the way, and I was asked to treat patients who I felt were no longer benefiting from physical therapy. So of course, what do you think I did? Talked with my supervising PT, right? I said, you know, this patient's not progressing. Um, I've tried all these different approaches. I've tried to modify the interventions. I've tried to uh, make several different changes and, and still no progress. Well, 
you can imagine that I was a little bit disappointed when the, the PT came back and said, well, you know, we, we're really getting a lot of pressure to keep the census up. We can't really discharge these patients right now. And uh, let's just keep them on a little bit longer, and then we'll discharge them in a week or two. We're going to get some new admissions in. So um, I was very conflicted when this issue repeatedly came up. I ultimately ended up leaving that organization. And that was a very difficult decision to make. But I knew that it was the right thing to do. So I hope none of you are ever faced with a similar situation. But if you are, I would ask that you own your profession. Physical therapists and physical therapist assistants own the profession. Corporations, CEOs, accountants, shareholders, they do not own the profession of physical therapy. Maintain your sense of compassion for the patient. Maintain your sense of ethical principles. And don't lose sight of why you dedicated over two years of your life to earn this degree and the countless hours you've spent and will spend preparing for the board exams. Remember, we are here to serve our patients by providing the highest level of physical therapy that we can with compassion and excellence. Thank you. All right. It is now my honor to present the award to the Outstanding Clinical Instructor of the Year. This is an award that is uh, voted on by the students. The students nominate physical therapist and physical therapist assistant clinical instructors. And I would like to uh, mention the, the nominees this year. So we had Robert Flores, physical therapist assistant at Christus Spahn Hospital South. Amber Ferrand, physical therapist at South Texas Bone and Joint Physical Therapy. Mason Hosey, physical therapist assistant at Post-Acute Medical Hospital. Nick Pothredi, physical therapist at Christus Spahn Hospital Alice. Joel Obergon, excuse me, Joel Obergon, physical therapist at South Texas Bone and Joint. Kathy Pierce, at therapy, physical therapist at Therapy First. Gino Bunwan, physical therapist, Christus Spahn Hospital Shoreline. And Callie Brendelin, PTA at Fisher Physical Therapy. So I am honored and it gives me great pleasure to present this year's award to Amber Ferrand of South Texas Bone and Joint. than I thought. <laughs> I want to thank you all so much for allowing me to be with you throughout this whole journey. It's been definitely a crazy time for you all and I'm so glad that you've made it this far and you're going to continue to just do amazing things. It's definitely exciting and humbling to even be considered and then selected for this distinguished honor. It's truly a privilege to be able to serve the students of Del Mar College through their journey to becoming a medical professional colleague in the world of physical therapy. So our team wanted to remind you all that the most successful people continue to ask questions and continue to learn and grow beyond what they already know. So just as Luke was saying, continue to be lifelong learners for yourselves, for your craft, and for the patient's lives that you will ultimately touch and influence. So on behalf of myself and the team at South Texas Bone and Joint, we really, truly appreciate your consideration and we really wish you the best in all of your future endeavors. Thank you all so much. All right. and, and I just wanna express my thanks again to all of the clinical instructors and all of our clinical partners who make this program possible without. Uh, the education that takes place in the clinical setting, uh, we definitely would not be able to, uh, to, to exist as a program. So thank you so much. All right, I would like to next introduce Dr. John Fisher, physical therapist. He is going to introduce the graduates and read the passages of thanks.
Congratulations, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Snowvid, COVID, good job. <laughs> Bell Alanis. Thank you to my family. Most of them couldn't be here tonight, but they have been with me every step of the way, and their support of the past two years have been invaluable. Dr. Mitchell, thank you for going the extra mile and making this pinning ceremony possible. I'm honored to have been a part of your first cohort here at DMC. Luke, thank you for keeping us going during the uncertain and ever-changing times of COVID when we didn't know what tomorrow would look like. Lastly, thank you to the class of 2021 who will always keep the light and fun even in the most stressful situations. Best wishes to you all. <laughs> Alexis Anguiano. I would like to thank my parents for all of the love and support they have given me to further my education and to take every challenge head on. I would also like to thank my sister for always being my study buddy and eventual Zoom partner. In stressful times, she was always able to flip the mood. I would also like to thank my wonderful fiance who provided motivation and made it possible for me to focus on school instead of working. Lastly, I'd like to thank all my classmates who endured the many challenges we faced as class of 2021. It was not easy, but it was definitely worth it. Roldan Bueno. I would like to thank all my brilliant and truly outstanding professors, CIs, and adjuncts for all their guidance and knowledge they have provided me in order to be successful. Special thanks to a couple of my CIs, Dr. Ferrand and Megan Kopeck. I've learned so much through your mentorship and guidance, which has allowed me to grow exponentially in knowledge during my time working with you both. I would also like to thank all of my classmates for always being there for me throughout the program. From the bottom of my heart, I'd like to thank my mother, Letty, and grandmother, Tommy, for their love and support. Mom, and I would especially like to thank you for being my role model and inspiration throughout this course of my journey. I remember all of the hard work and sacrifices you made to become a speech therapist. I was so proud of you when you accomplished that goal. I hope I've made you just as proud. Love you, Mom. <laughs> Ashley Barrett. Thank you to my mom and siblings for always supporting me and being here this evening. Thank you to my professors, classmates, and clinical instructors. Thank you to my dogs for pushing me out of bed every morning. And thank you for the creators of Red Bull. And thank you, Ashley, for the shortest passage. Michael Conde. I would first like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because without him, I would not be in this position. I would like to thank my incredible professors, adjuncts, and CIs for providing me with the tools, skills, and education to grow as a student at PTA and have success in the program. I'm very appreciative of the time that was invested by every single one of you. Thank you to my beautiful wife for all your patience and sacrifice throughout the years. You bring joy to my life and you're my reason for why I strive to be a better husband, father, and man. Thank you, Mom, for all your love, support, and words of encouragement. You've helped me up build up my confidence, inspired me to pursue this career path. I would not be here without you. And last but not least, I would like to thank my classmates for all their collaborative learning and late night study sessions. This was a group effort and a job well done. <laughs> Alexis Davis. I am thankful for all the professors, adjuncts, and clinical instructors that adjusted to the pandemic and made sure we had the best learning experience possible. I'm also thankful for my family, friends, and loved ones that have supported me throughout this journey because I wouldn't have done, been able to do it without them. Lastly, I'm thankful for all my classmates, especially the ones that motivated and pushed me not to give up when things got tough. Our class has, made, has had an experience like no other, but despite that, we persevered and finally made it to the end. Tristan DeLeon. I would like to thank first and foremost my mother for supporting me through everything in life. She's a huge reason I do what I'm doing because her strength showed me growing up about perseverance and independence. I would also like to thank my grandma, dad, and little brother for becoming my support system through hard times growing up. Lastly, I'd like to thank my classmates, professors, and clinical instructors for giving me tools and assisting me all throughout the program. Kathleen Duenas, 
These two years have passed so quickly and have grown so much in every way. I love this school and will always be part of me, so I want to say thank you. Thank you to my parents and Kobe for their unconditional love and support. Thank you to my clinical instructors and adjuncts for sharing your knowledge with us, building our skills, confidence, and performance. Finally, thank you to my classmates. You have, you have grown to be like a second family to me, and I will cherish our memories. Good luck to you all, and I hope we meet again. Eddie George. Mom and Dad, I'd like to thank you for the unconditional love, support, and faith you have bestowed in me throughout the years. You both continue to be the most influential role models to date. We do not always see eye to eye. However, your confidence in my ability to succeed has always been present. I truly would not be the man I am today without you both. Thank you for the wind beneath my wings when I had no energy left to maintain flight. All my love, baby bird. Cassie Gracia. I would like to first, of course, thank God for everything. A special, very special thank you to my family and boyfriend for the endless love and support, for always believing in me, as well as listening to me vent about school. Lastly, thank you to my classmates. You all were not only my study buddies, and I wasn't sure if I was supposed to read this or not because it's crossed out, but my drinking buddies, my lifelong friends, and now future fellow colleagues. Juan Morales. I would like to thank all the teachers, adjuncts, CIs I crossed paths with during my journey throughout this. I've learned so much from all of you and know that I've been put on a path for success as I start my second career. I would like to also thank my classmates who were there for me through studying or support of their friendship, especially the President Lance, who did more than all of us during this process for keeping us informed and working his office position duties. Special thanks to my buddy Mike for the late night studies for helping me finally understand that Gus is out and Russ is in. Last but not least, my family, Veronica and Jared, this was all made possible with your words of support and encouragement and love you guys. Show me each and every day. Love you both. <laughs> Haley Nelson. I would like to thank my parents, Chris and Stephanie, for the continual support and love they have given me throughout the program. Thank you to my professors, adjuncts, and clinical instructors for investing countless hours in my education and for creating a positive learning environment, even in the midst of pandemic. Congratulations to my fellow classmates and future clinicians. It's been an honor to experience this program with all of you, and I look forward to seeing how each one of you will impact lives in this field. Heather Ortiz, I would like to thank all my family who supported me during this journey, especially my grandparents, dad, husband, and two babies. You all have seen me go through a roller coaster of emotion during these past two years. Thank you for all the continued support you all have given me. Thank you for helping me beyond the imaginable so I can get to where I am today. I love you all. This is from Shelby, and she wasn't able to attend this evening. Her baby decided to take center stage, it sounds like. Thank you to my husband for encouraging me through this process. You've been my biggest supporter, and I couldn't have made it to the point without you. To my daughter, you have, met, you have been my reason to be successful. Thanks to our professors, adjuncts, and clinical instructors for helping me build a good, strong foundation. And to my classmates, this has been a crazy ride. Thanks for all the laughs. We finally made it. Sabrina Salinas, I would like to start off by saying thank you to my family and friends that have been there, during, been there for me during this time and always start encouraging me to continue to push through and have faith that it will all be worth it in the end. I would also like to thank my dogs and babies, Milo and Jax. They drive me insane, but they also keep me sane on days that I feel stressed. Most importantly, I'd like to thank my mom. Thank you for being my rock. Thank you for putting up with me even when you didn't have to, even when I was probably stressed out more than you, stressed you out more than myself. Thank you for always believing in me, especially on days that I didn't believe in myself. I couldn't have done it without everyone that has been there for me, but I mostly couldn't have done it without you. I love you more than I could ever explain or give back, so thank you. Thank you all again. Lance Spooner. 
<laughs> I would like to thank my God, my beautiful wife, my family, my friends, and everyone who has a positive impact on my life that helped me get to where I am today. Thank you. <laughs> Elizabeth Stout. I would like to thank my parents for supporting me through this journey and being understanding about the stress that came along with it. I would also like to thank Luke and Dr. Mitchell for the things they've done to keep all this possible and giving us the knowledge to move forward with our journey. Also, I would want to thank my classmates for always being there to help and answer questions that at times seemed impossible to comprehend. It's been quite the journey, journey with numerous obstacles, but we finally made it through. Margarita Valladolid. There are so many people that I would like to thank who helped me get through this program. First, I'd like to thank our professors, all the adjuncts, and our clinical instructors who each played their part in molding us all to become knowledgeable and skillful PTAs, all while constantly having to change and adjust the curriculum and teaching methods due to COVID. Secondly, I'd like to thank all my classmates because without them, this journey would not have been so memorable. Finally, I want to thank my parents since I could remember my dad has always told me and my siblings' education is everything, and my mom has always told us to follow our dreams no matter what they are. And here I am with my education, my dream, all thanks to their love, support, and guidance. <laughs> Nancy Winterbauer. I would like to thank my husband for supporting me, encouraging me when I wanted to give up. I would like to thank my kids for helping each other while I couldn't be there and for helping me study and playing my patience. Thank you for Jan, Luke, and Dr. Mitchell for putting up with all my questions and teaching me. Also thank you to the adjuncts, classmates, and CIs for having patience with me, teaching me, and encouraging me. It's a, been a journey that I will not forget. Thank you. Dr. Fisher, and congratulations to all of our graduates. Next in the ceremony, we will be reciting the oath of a physical therapist assistant. So I invite any clinicians in the audience to please rise and join us in the recitation of the oath. Stu graduates, please rise. And let's say it loud and proud together. Ready? In the presence of my colleagues, friends, families, and teachers, honored profession. I solemnly and willingly state, dedicate myself to the following. I will practice physical therapy with compassion for the vulnerabilities in each of my patients and will work to preserve the dignity and promote their health and welfare. I will value the lives of my patients as I value my own life through my concern for their significance and with respect for them and the confidential nature of our relationship. I will be humble. I recognize my limitations and continue to consult with my colleagues and co-workers for knowledge with which I can better treat my patients and for the inspiration to expand and augment my education. I will share my knowledge with my colleagues and patients freely with compassion and patience. I will work toward the improvement of the quality of life for all of my patients. I will honor the choices that my patients make with respect to their wishes and needs. I will do no harm to another human. I will work to improve the practice of physical therapy so that all who seek it will receive treatment which is proper, ethical, and just. I will not allow my judgment regarding the practice of my profession to be influenced by race, creed, religion, greed, or unethical behavior. I will expect the same behavior from my colleagues and co-workers. Thus, with this oath, I freely accept the obligation and rewards which accompany my practice of physical therapy. Congratulations, you may be seated. In closing, I leave you with one of my favorite quotes it is from a gentleman named John Wesley. He's a clergyman from the 1700s, and it's short. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the places you can,
to all the people that you can for as long as you ever can. And graduates, this is my wish for you. I'm very, very excited for you to graduate from this program and begin your life and join our community of clinical practice. This concludes our pinning ceremony. Thank you so very much for attending. We will dismiss in order. We have been requested by Del Mar officials to um, allow the students to exit first, then allow those in the far most portion of the auditorium to exit once the graduates have passed, and then for those of us here in the front. Uh, Del Mar officials have requested, please do not linger in the lobby or at the front of the building. Thank you so much for being here and sharing in this celebration this evening. Thank you. <laughs> Graduates, you are dismissed.